So last night I did some sketching and some note taking and some uh, thinking about the sentiment that I want to make in Ten Pines. And I'm going to show you the stuff that I did in our nice notebook here. In the back here we got that house. It's all broken down and stuff. It's got a refrigerator there. Refrigerator is very important. What I'm going to do is board this up and we're going to repurpose it as a town hall. These are going to be living quarters over on this side because it's got the hill on this side so I feel like it's far less likely that they're going to get attacked. There's also a hill coming down this way so we're going to put, this is just going to be storage and then we got our farm, farm plots here and our farm plots there. Those are pretty much going to stay the same. And then we got this area which is going to be sort of like an outdoor dining and cooking area. So we have a station for traders out in front here which is fenced in but it's also separate from the main settlement. So there's gonna be a, like a big equally heighted shack over here and then put some sort of, um, I don't know, sort of like a lookout area up here. And then there'll be a security tower over here because it's just like a natural place for a security tower. They might do a something else now that I'm saying it out loud. Having two security towers in such a small settlement doesn't make a lot of sense, but also it really cuts down the amount of space that the traders can um, occupy. Some ideas for decorations. So obviously there's got to be bloody raider corpses. Xenophobic signs, I don't know if they exist. Big guns. Not entirely sure why that's important, but it was very important for me to write down. Today, Minuteman flags. Because I'm going to send Preston Garvey over there, I think. I'm also going to send the Longs over there because... They experienced some of the same stuff that, in theory, the Ten Pines Bluff people have experienced. Uh, cats, because I can't think of anything more hateful than a cat. I had this weird idea of having everyone in suits or in Rust Devil's gear, because I think, well, the suits is a reference to the, um, they try to convince you to give them all of your stuff. I don't remember what they're called. I, maybe I'll write it somewhere. On the screen, and then we got the Rust Devils, because I think I just I think it would be funny for them to wear this like gnarly, vicious-looking stuff that is from the people that they don't like, the Raiders. Those are my nostrils. So I'll be honest. Uh, when I saw that my prompt for this settlement was hateful, uh, I got a little anxious <laughs> because uh, that term's really loaded. People use the term hateful not to describe hateful things, but to describe people who are speaking unfavorably about you. In this universe, in the Fallout universe, everybody sort of has some level of hate towards other people. And I wanted, I thought about sort of just making it really overt and just making something really disturbing and disgusting and, and um, something very hateful, like taking a bunch of raider bodies, uh, laying them all over the place and making it really gross and like dead bodies and gore and guts. And I think there's probably going to be a little bit of that, but I don't want to use that as a crutch. What I really like is to do something that's... challenges the idea of hate in the Fallout universe, an obvious sign of hate, but also maybe some subtle hatred, um, which just means, <laughs> which just means, <laughs> my dog's leaning on me. Part of my idea was to send the people who have been affected the most by raider attacks to this settlement. So Preston Garvey is going to be there. Um, the longs are going to be there because I think that they have been hit the hardest. And, and I think when you get a group of people who are so narrowly focused on protecting their community against the bad guys, protecting themselves, but also um, having such strong, such a strong experience with hate directed towards them that maybe they become more insular and also 
directly more hateful towards others that weren't part of that group. Uh, yeah, I'm being very vague, but that's kind of because I don't really know where I'm going to go with this. Um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. I was actually born and raised in a community not unlike that, a very hateful community. Um, it had a very, after the Vietnam War, we got a very large Hmong population. The white population of that city, it's just, they were really, really unhappy about it. And even when I was in high school, people still complained about it. And that was, what, 2000? I mean, not that long ago. And at one point it was labeled by a magazine or somebody as the whitest city in America. God, and I think a lot of the residents there still wish that was true. <laughs> Pikachu! Get out of my shot. So the more I think about this idea of a community being hateful, thinking about where I grew up, you know, hate wasn't really a daily staple. There were people, of course, as with any place like that, where they would have no problem telling somebody, hey, I hate you, or you're a, insert racial slur here. They didn't say it out loud in public spaces, but when they were with people that were like them and they knew that they weren't going to be ostracized, then they'd talk about it. But it wasn't, it wasn't outright in, in my experience. Now, I'm a person of privilege. I'm white, I'm male, and so I was kind of shielded from that. So I can't speak from the perspective of anybody who would have been ostracized. I'm thinking about Ten Pines, and that sort of seems trivial to apply that to a video game. You know, Marcy Long and June Long are good people. They seem like very good people. As far as we know, they're good people. They just fell on um, a really difficult situation. It's understandable that they would be hateful towards uh, raiders, but I also feel like the experiences they went through just made them more guarded, would make them more shielded from the outside world, and so they would apply those prejudices elsewhere. Making a community with the theme of hate, or being hateful, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for it to be cartoonish. It makes more sense for it to be subtle. You know, having signs up like, we have the right to refuse service to anyone, or, um... Not everyone welcome here. I don't. I also don't remember what signs they have in the game. I don't know. I'm gonna think about that as I'm building this community. <laughs> I guess I was doing a little bit of creative reading into the character of Preston and Marcy and June and these two individuals. I think one of them is named Elaine and the other one is Bob, um, whose names I made up. The front entrance of this thing is just brutal and a little disgusting and hard to look at, hard to be in. And that's where the traitors are. Because Marcy and June and whoever's making the decisions here, let's say it's Preston, they know that they need things from the traitors, but they also understand that they need to protect themselves. And so they want the traitors to come help them and then get out as soon as possible. So there's no place to really sleep, although I put some straw pillows on benches, that would be really uncomfortable. There's no place to really warm up. Um, I mean, there are these things, but there's also, it's, um, difficult to, it would be difficult to maintain uh, comfort there, and so they'd want to move on, despite what gameplay footage will actually show. You have this gate that requires two doorways, so that, and there's a guard up above, so that if anything happens, 
they can hold you accountable for it. It's a choke point for anybody trying to get into this place. The, the walls are incredibly high. They have razor wire um, just to keep people out. But the inside is a much different story. The inside is this area where the inhabitants of this settlement believe that they're good people and they believe that they're doing a good thing, but there's a lot of this subtle undercutting of what an actual good person would be. They've decided to have stocks for public shaming. They um, have stored up a bunch of food, and clearly they have plenty of food, but they're not willing to share it. They have these raider poles. Despite the fact that they were attacked by raiders multiple times, they use the raider technology and the raider equipment to sort of like scare people off so you have those spikes in the front you have like the the raider poles uh, all throughout the camp and i imagine that the people who are there see no irony there but if somebody were allowed to come into their community that would freak them out because you have these people who are putting on nice faces and they're smiling and they're saying hi how are you the town hall which was the at first it was the the broken down house that's originally in the game, but I had to get rid of it because it just didn't, it was too small. It was awkwardly shaped for barn pieces. And so I had to scrap it, I just got rid of it and replaced it with a similar looking barn. Again, there's like this, there's this juxtaposition of everything's fine. We're good people and get out of our town. They're comfortable with each other. They are not comfortable with outsiders. They are not comfortable with anybody who they deem to be unbit. So like the, the paintings all over the place, like they're trying really hard to make it seem like this community is fine, like everybody's fine. Like they want to ignore everything that's happening outside. So they have this facade of normalcy and, and you know, pretty pictures and stuff, but they don't, uh, that's not how they feel. I like the little nook uh, for the junkyard dog. That doesn't really add to the narrative at all. It's just kind of cute. The people who are security here actually have a guard post right outside their their house. So the people, uh, so the building right next to the town hall is what you could probably call a barracks. And it's cozy enough, but at the same time, there's a guard post right outside. So if ever they feel like something's going on they can climb up there and figure out what's happening marcy and june have their own place it's sort of smaller than everybody else's but it's secluded it's theirs uh which i thought was i think marcy and june deserve that they've been through a lot i mean everybody has but marcy and june for some reason i have a bit more um sympathy empathy sympathy for them uh, so I felt like they needed a place where they could cuddle and fuck and <laughs> just be in their own space. You know what I mean? Which is probably not very nice for the rest of the residents because the rest of the residents have to sleep in, um, community building. But even the community building is nice. It's got a TV. It's got some nice, um, some nice chairs. Like, really the juxtaposition of the trading post area in the front to the rest of settlement is really the big one that I was going for. You have in the front, you know, people are welcome. Come on, but this is where you have to stay. You have to stay out, secluded from the rest of us. You have to stay in this brutal, horrid, gory environment. Uh, we're probably not going to let you within the community walls. But if you were allowed into the community walls, you would see that this is actually a really nice, safe, warm place. Even though they don't feel safe, they don't feel warm, they want to present this image of, of safeness, niceness, warmness. So the bar was one place where I wanted the shopkeeper to be very honest, as opposed to what uh, everybody else in the community is. The rest of the community is trying to convince themselves really because nobody else is allowed in that everything's fine everything's safe and nothing to worry about here but the barkeeper is sort of like yeah but that's not really true and so he has these um he has paintings you know where everybody else has paintings that are just kind of bland you know like puppies and silos and stuff like that 
um, the barkeep has pictures of like people in the wasteland and they're more accurate to the depiction of Fallout 4's wasteland. They're more honest, maybe even a little cynical. The bar is sort of this last vestige understanding of what, let's say, the barkeep's understanding of the real world actually is. And in some ways it is actual, you know, it is accurate. Maybe this person is truthful and honest, but also they're kind of a sleaze because they want to display objectified women. <laughs>
had this brilliant idea, and I don't know why I never had it before, of having an object find cheat sheet. So I got some pallets, because I use pallets quite a bit. And the doghouse, I always forget about the doghouse and the dog bowl. And the cinder blocks I can never find, ever, because they're in such a weird spot. Homemaker, structures, miscellaneous, miscellaneous. It's a miscellaneous, miscellaneous item. That's how obscure it is. Like, what the fuck? 